Well, hello everybody and welcome. Hello everyone. We are the Happy Travellers. I'm Steve. I'm Wendy. And we travel around the UK in our uh, motorhome, a uh, auto trail Comanche with our little dog Pippin, who's down there a bit hot and tired. Well, <laughs> we're all a bit yeah, hot and we tired are. today. We are all a bit hot and tired, yes. So, um, the van's been in storage for a couple of days mm. and uh, we just picked it up mm. uh, at about two o'clock this afternoon. Mm. What did we find? We found we had a flat tire. Damn it. Oh, God. Tire. We could have cried. It was so hot. There was no the shade. Was so the sun was blazing down on us. So we wanted to get we going. We wanted to cry, we need, really. We, needed, we had a two-hour drive from where we were to where we are now in the mm. new forest. Mm. Um, so we, we decided to change the wheel ourselves. Now, it was on the back. Mm -hmm. um, so... It was it was the what the rear wheel on the driver's side. Mm -hmm. Luckily enough, <laughs> my brother-in-law Dave was with us. Yeah. Um, he's well, he's had a long history uh, mm. being a mechanic, mm. so he was uh, well able. He to gave you a lot of hints and tips. Mm -hmm. He really helped you. And he helped out. He, he really helped really you because he knew it. And um, you knew though, which was most important, that underneath the passenger kit. Underneath, Underneath the passenger, the passenger seat. seat is all the kit you There's need to change the wheel. Yeah. It's in a black box, and a lot of people don't know it's under there. So have a look <laughs> if you've got one. It's a yeah. sciz it's a scissor jack. Yeah, uh, as it's mm. called the scissor mm. jack, and it 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 sort of the, the top of it as mm. you wind the thing goes up like that, mm. and and the bolt goes right through and screws mm. the two end pieces in. Mm. This is a five-ton van. Yeah. <laughs> Guess how difficult that yes. was. <laughs> and Steve, and Steve was lying down on the gravel and the grass, and there was an ant's nest there. There was an ant's oh, nest and rabbit poo everywhere. Yeah. What could you do, darling? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. He was a trooper. Yeah, to do it. Yep. So, yep. Um, and we stopped into Quick Fit, uh, mm. just down the road from the storage, to hopefully get it repaired and, and replaced back on but because the van won't fit in their workshop they couldn't put it back on mm. but they did very kindly so this is like a top marks to quit fit yep <clears throat> um they checked it out yeah. and as far as they could tell there was no puncture no was there? they were so kind yeah so um they took it off didn't they yeah. the back for you and they've, they've re re-inflated yep. it Mm. Um, and I put it back into the spare wheel position on the back of the van mm. so we're going to you know, check that out tomorrow mm. to see if it's gone down again mm. um, and, yeah, maybe on the way out of this rally where mm. we are in the new forest we'll find somewhere that can actually swap those wheels mm. back over mm. and if it really has, has gone down again to repair it mm -hmm. um, but we want to say well done, Quickfit. They were so kind mm. and friendly and didn't well, charge us a penny. And they, no. it took them about, it was there about a quarter of an hour or so. Yeah. So well done, Just Quickfit. <laughs> but they did, I did ask them for a price mm. on the, uh, it's a Mich Michelin uh, Agilis mm. tyre. I'm just going to get the size. Mm. Well, I don't know, darling. Can you see it? Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're 225, yeah. 16, uh, sorry, 225 stroke 75 stroke 16 mm. M and S tyres, so mud and snow, so they're, they're all year tyres, mm. winter tyres. Um, they're big old beasts, mm. and they did quote me for a single replacement tyre, and I think they do discounts. I didn't ask them. I think they do mm. discounts for mm. um, multiple tyres. So if I needed two or four or six, mm. um, I think that I'd get them cheaper. And they did suggest that I'd probably get away with other tyres. However, their price for a single replacement tyre, fitted and balanced, all up, all done, was £212. 
so not far away from the sort of price that I expected them to be. They're a bit lower than I wanted than I expected them to be, mm. but not as low as I wanted them to be. So other mm. people on the comments have said, "Oh, you can get these for 150 quid." Well, um, if you can, that'd be great. Yeah, that would be great. That's a good saving on six tyres. But, if but you bear in mind, them. you know, we're we're travelling a lot. And I do like to be safe, mm. uh, and I do like to have really good tyres. Yes. So um, you know, I'm I'm mm. not I'm not going to skimp on the tyres. It's really important that they mm. that they do drive you along and <laughs> enable you to stop. Bearing in mind, it's five tons bowling along the road at 50 miles an hour. That's quite a lot of mm. weight. Anyway, the other thing that we're going to talk about today yep. is yes, your. Can't hear, can't hear, can't hear. No hearing aids. Uh oh. Mr. Deaf Lugs. Um, <laughs> some of you will know because you've seen some of the um, other videos that I've been referred by my GP to the ear, nose, and throat specialist or the ENT hospital. I haven't got that referral yet. Uh, it's, it's in the post, as they say. Um, but he did say self-refer for a hearing test which I did in Weymouth a couple mm. of weeks ago and then I went back to a, a, as a follow-up because my hear, hearing is 50% on this side as to what it is this side so you know mm. if, if that's my hearing this side I'm down here mm. on this side so and this is variable so it goes up and down now he what I said to him when I went back I said look what about yeah what about the referral Oh, I've done that. You've you've been referred. You'll get a letter, and the appointment will come through. Great, but what about the hearing aids? Because I, you know, they said that I would benefit from hearing aids right away. He said, "Well, that's a self referral. So just go back to the place on the list that he'd given me. Bearing in mind they're all NHS outsourced contracts, mm. so they're NHS, but provided by places like Specsavers." Mm. Um, under contract to the NHS so I said right okay book that and I went there at 12.30 today very nice people again mm. uh, you know we get great service from Specsavers so top marks to mm. them mm. however <laughs> when they looked at the hearing test and said oh well, this is NHS ah you've got um, differential hearing so less on this side than on this side in Surrey, which is where we are, the contract is we're not allowed to provide NHS hearing aids because you've got differential hearing. Plus, you have tinnitus. And we're not allowed to provide hearing aids if you have tinnitus on the NHS. So, it, 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 this just... I'm dumbfounded almost with these GPs I know they're general practitioners and I know they know a little bit about a lot of stuff because mm. it's general but they should know the blooming basics of how to refer you so once again I mean when I went for the hearing test in Weymouth the audiologist there said your doctor should never have referred you for a hearing test he should have just sent you to a hospital for an ENT specialist yeah. there's something going on yeah mm. So, this audiologist is going to do exactly the same thing. She's going to write him a snotty letter. Mm. Um, not her words, but she said it wouldn't be too complimentary. No. Um, so, so um, but when I went through the whole thing, the NHS hearing aids, we don't think are going to work because of the... Because of where my hearing loss is, it's in the upper range, you know, the high pitch sounds, and that's almost why I've got tinnitus as well. Because the NHS are really down the cheap end of the thing, and because of the way my hearing is, I'm going to have to have those like really fitted in inside the ear, so it's going to block all external sound and only transmit the sound plus they're gonna whistle a lot because of the feedback, because it's all the high frequency sounds. 
and that's just what happens when they're programmed up they just feed back a lot nothing they can do it's just the way it is unless the NHS pay more so we're currently thinking that I'm probably going to buy um, the private ones which well they're going to cost two grand and that yeah we're still we're still thinking about we're still looking at it you know we don't know whether we can really justify it but you know the audiologist in Specsaver said look get get the NHS ones even if you do go for the private ones get the NHS ones because at least you'll have them as a backup if if the private ones stop working for any reason or we run out of batteries or whatever at least you'll have something but she you know she was quite clear that you know when she prescribes these when she does these on the NHS for normal people they they get a lot of comeback with the feedback that they have so I'm disappointed to say the least in the NHS expertise um, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, I love the NHS, and I, and I just, I wish they would just do better. You know, I've, I've, well, Wendy and I have paid a lot of money in to the NHS, and I know that's not what it's about, but they should know. They should know these things. They should, and it's disappointing that they don't, or that they can't be bothered. Hmm. Anyway. We're going to make some decisions about that. Um, and hopefully little, your letter yeah. will come through soon. So We've got a little while. Yeah, there's no that. rush. So, You've been deaf and yeah. for so long now, I don't think another few weeks will mm. make any difference. It that makes a difference. Never to rush into things. Think mm. about it. And, mm. yeah. and I don't know how long you have to wait for an appointment, but I shouldn't think it's more than six weeks. No. There is a time limit. There, you... From referral to get the appointment, I, I, I wouldn't think it's more than three months. I don't really know, but it's no. no I think it's not that long. So mm. let's hope it doesn't push out that far mm. and uh, yeah, uh, interfere with our we? plans for December. Yeah, mm. yeah. But we will see. Yeah, no worry. Take note, each day as it comes. Look, yes. Note where we are. Look at this. Look, look. You can see we're in a wonderful position we've got a few vans that way and a load of vans that way um, but we're in a wonderful wonderful place mm. on the edge of the new forest it's absolutely oh. stunning here beautiful and really I can't great wait to walk around and show you everything it's really great it's to a be, farm it's a farm and be back on the yeah. road isn't and it? when yeah. i opened the farm gate outside there were the new forest ponies <laughs> <laughs> wandering around yeah. and in front of our van will come ponies as well so yeah oh lovely i love horses okay i love so. all animals so <laughs> anyway we better wind it up for today because we're me. rabbiting on yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i'm gonna say good night steve <laughs> good night <laughs> but thank anyway, you yeah so if you've enjoyed this video yeah please give it a thumbs up Yep. And if you haven't yet subscribed, mm. just click the subscribe button down below. Yes. And if you want reminders, ring the bell mm. and we'll send you a reminder every time we upload a video, which these days is every day at 10.30pm. Mm. So follow our travels around the UK and Europe. Me, Wendy and Pippin, the happy travellers. We're going to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye everyone. Thanks for watching.